Let's look at eutectic phase diagrams. A eutectic phase diagram can result if we have three different phases possible, and we are going to call these the alpha, beta, and liquid. And alpha and beta are both solid phases, which may have different crystal structures, for example. If we want to make our phase diagram, what we would do is that we would, of course, make plots of delta G mixing versus X for each of these phases. So we would have three curves, one for alpha, one for beta, and one for liquid. And if we do that, we use our common tangent construction to find the regions where two phases are in equilibrium and to determine the composition of those phases. So let's look at some of these P versus X curves that would result in a UTEC forming. So what we have here are plots of delta G mixing as a function of the composition X2 at different temperatures decreasing temperatures as we go across to the right. And then down on the bottom is where we're starting to map out our phase diagram in terms of T versus X2. We have three different curves because we have three different phases possible. We have alpha, we have beta, and we have liquid curves. And we have all three of these on all of these plots. You'll notice also that the reference states are being accounted for uh, in each of these cases, right? The, for component one, the alpha phase is the reference state at each temperature. For component two, the beta phase is the reference point at each temperature. So let's look at um, how this works and how we end up with a eutectic phase diagram from this. You'll remember that we use our common tangent construction to find any two phase regions on our phase diagram. And so we can start out uh, at the highest temperature. And over here, the alpha phase has the lowest Gibbs free energy. Over here, the liquid phase does. And in between, we end up with a two phase region. And the composition of the alpha phase and the liquid phase at those two, in that two phase region is, is given through that common tangent construction. And we can map those onto the phase diagram here at T equals 1250. Now at this temperature, the beta phase was really just kind of hanging out up here. It was not involved, involved at all in what was going on. As we decrease the temperature, you see this curve for beta is starting to come down and is starting to get involved basically in what's going on over here. And so we end up basically with two common tangent constructions. So we have one region here where alpha has the lowest Gibbs free energy. Then we have a two phase region where alpha and the liquid are in equilibrium and that those two phases have these specific compositions. Then we have a region here where liquid has the lowest Gibbs free energy. And then even though it's hard to see on this particular picture, our common tangent construction shows us that we have another two phase region where the liquid and the beta phase are in equilibrium with these particular compositions. And then we end up finally over here at a high x2 almost equal to 1 with a little bit of beta phase. And so we see that mapped out on the phase diagram here where we have alpha and we have liquid and then way over on the edge we have beta. If we decrease the temperature further, we come to a point where we have a common tangent construction where all three phases share the same common tangent. So they all touch here. And this is our eutectic temperature, okay, where all three phases are in equilibrium. And so up to this point, we have alpha. And from this point on, we have beta. 
but in between here, all three phases are together, can be together in equilibrium, right? But only when the liquid had this particular composition and when we have this temperature, right? So that's the eutectic temperature. And then if we decrease the temperature further, the liquid line is moving up and we have only solid and we end up with this alpha plus beta two phase region. So this is an example of a eutectic, one of the uh, sort of trademarks of a eutectic is that on cooling we can go directly from the liquid phase to the alpha plus beta phases instead of going for example uh, if we're cooling over here we go from liquid to liquid plus alpha and then to alpha so the liquid is sort of slowly going away here the liquid goes directly into the solid phase so let's look at an example of a real system which has a use diagram so here's our example system this is lead and tin lead tin is used well was used for solder because it has this low eutectic temperature so it can stay in the liquid to a lower temperature or you can think about it, you only have to heat it up less in order for it to melt so we have over here this is solid lead so a single phase region here's liquid here is solid tin and of course down here is the uh, lead plus tin here is liquid plus lead and here is liquid plus tin and our eutectic temperature is 185 C and our eutectic composition is at about 75 atomic percent lead. We can look at another example which has many um, multiple eutectic points. This is the phase diagram for gold and titanium and you can see on here uh, a number of eutectics. Here's one of them here's another one, here's another one. So these are all eutectics where we have a liquid going to two solid phases upon cooling. Right, so here we have liquid coming down to here and this region is titanium plus AUTI3. We also have on here what's called a eutectoid where you have the same kind of reaction, only the high temperature phase is also a liquid. Okay, so this has a number of eutectic reactions, we would call them, on this phase diagram. It's useful to think about how the microstructure might look for different cooling routes on this phase diagram. So let's consider a couple of different options and how the microstructure would evolve as the system changed. So let's consider first cooling along a path over here. Okay, so we are going to start out in the liquid phase and then we're going to end up second in the alpha plus liquid and then we will end up in just the lead and then we will end up basically down here in the lead plus tin. So in the first case if we looked at sort of in the microscope at what we were seeing we would have pure liquid and that liquid would have the composition that I've drawn here, which is about 12% tin. At the second point, we would have still liquid present, but we would start to be forming uh, pockets of solid tin. And the composition of the liquid and the composition of the tin sorry, not, not tin, of lead. This would be solid lead. And the composition of that lead would be given by 
this point right here on this phase diagram. The liquid composition would also start to change a little bit as the lead formed. When we get down to point three, we now have all lead, and we would have sort of a polycrystalline structure where we might have grain boundaries here. But this is now all solid lead, although not pure lead, right? It still has about 12% of tin in it. And as we would continue to cool it further, we would still have basically this solid lead structure that we had before, but now we would start to precipitate out a tin phase, and that would start to grow basically within our lead grains. So blue is the tin phase. So that's if we're cooling over here where we pass into the one solid phase and then down to the two phase region. We could consider instead what would happen if we cooled at the eutectic temperature and composition. And so we can look at basically just two cases, one up here and two down here. And so now we have, in case one, same picture as before, basically, right? It's all liquid, although it has a different composition. It has this composition here, which is about, it looks like 70 atomic percent tin. And then at stage two, we have our eutectic structure, where you kind of have what would look like grains of alternating layers of, of alpha and beta. And so if you had zoomed in on this while it was growing, you would end up with a structure which looks like this. So it's kind of growing like this in layers, where you have alternating layers of the lead-rich phase and then the tin-rich phase and the lead-rich phase and so on. So this is not pure lead. Let me make a note of this right? It's really just this alpha phase over here. Um, but this is growing, this interface is growing into this liquid. And so then what you end up with down here are sort of these alternating layers of lead and tin, because the, this growth pattern has started at different points in the microstructure, and they grow together. We can look at one last place and that would be a composition somewhere like this and so we can consider what we have up here and then we can consider at a couple of different points in here both at a higher temperature and at a lower temperature and then just below the eutectic temperature and so again at the liquid at step one there we have just pure liquid. At step two, we have something similar to before, where we're starting to precipitate this, precipitate this lead-rich phase. At step temperature three here, right, we're now getting a lot more of the lead-rich phase, so we have a high volume fraction of that lead-rich phase. And then as we solidify that last step, the part that was the liquid, so we still have our sort of lead-rich particles in here, but the part of this that was the liquid transforms similarly to that eutectic transformation. And so we end up, for example, sort of with this still polycrystalline structure, but where within each grain you have the alpha-beta lamella or layers. And so that's how microstructure development works and where a eutectic phase diagram comes from.